Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC 303 from a betting perspective. And again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to UFC wagering. Um, we're not trying to find out what's most likely to win. What we're trying to do is identify which prop or which side has been steamed by narrative, by by uh, by MMA Twitter, by groupthink, by things that really have not much to do with the actual prospects of the results, um, and attempt to be contrarian. We're going to try to just throw out that which is very easy to tell. We're going to throw out that which is uh, blatantly obvious, with the idea being that those things are usually what is overvalued. Um, and again, we're, we're doing this uh, in part, yes, to get you some action on this week's uh, these weeks this weekend's fights, but also to help train you and how to kind of think about these markets in general. You know, I, I promise you that the, the the way results actually distribute in a sport like MMA is significantly more variant than the way uh, uh, MMA betting touts will have you believe. Um, you get so much. Uh, um, convergence on binary outcomes, meaning you have an entire community that eventually at the end of the week decides that either A wins this way or B wins that way, and essentially nothing else is possible. Now, I'm being facetious with, 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 with that, but that's really the idea, is that even though this is a sport that's ripe with chaos, people are so, so I would say egotistical. They're so confident in their tape study and and, and their recency bias on, on things that just happened to predict what's going to happen in the next fight when these people are just going after each other with all that they have. And and we 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 as handicappers try to concoct game plans that we think people are going to employ, but at the end of the day, yeah, they, they don't employ them as much as you think, okay, or as much as you would like, that's for sure. In any case, um, we're going to go through these fights and we're going to go through the rules and we're going to have some fun with this. Again, so here are the rules. We have 13 fights and we are going to be betting one thing on each fight on the card. And that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, another thing, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And again, that's not the best money management system in the world. And we don't care about that either. Um, and for us, one unit is going to be exactly $180. It's just kind of my uh, my unit, uh, tens high. Congrats, you know, good luck numbers. Uh, and again, I still think it's healthy for people that are going to release picks and say that they're going to back them up with real money to say exactly what that money is. Um, anyway, uh, and the other thing is that considering the fact that we're going to probably be a little kooky and do things that our, other people aren't doing, we're going to presume that we go Owens twelve. Um, such that the main event, we are going to have to attempt to win all of our money back. So in the main event, we're going to be picking something that returns us at least 12 to 1. All right. So let's just get started, and we'll, we'll talk through the narratives of these fights and talk through what's most logical and then probably do the opposite. All right. Ricky Simone versus Vinicius Oliveira. So we, we have it's pretty clear what's supposed to happen here. Uh, Ricky Simone's going to go for a whole bunch of takedowns, and, you know, and, and Oliveira – Really, his takedown defense is not the best. However, Oliveira definitely has, you know, some flashy KOs and things like that. So I think that the Oliveira by KO side is probably, in a weird way, kind of overvalued. And I think anything with uh, with Simone by uh, by sub is probably overvalued as well. So as long as you don't play either of those two things, I think you're probably doing okay here. So what do we want to do? We can either play the really off the wall, like Oliveira by decision, okay? Or we could do something like either Simone by decision, or if you want to get more kooky, we could play Simone by um, by KO. Um, but to do that, I mean, I'd really have to feel comfortable that Simone has some KOs in his, uh, in his history. So let's go through this. Let's go to fight odds before we even – on these and let's just see if it, it i just want something reasonable i just want to see simone maybe a, a ko or two in his in his history submission is a ko what do you think about that one ko in his whole career two ko's um decision there's a ko also all right you know what 
That's good enough for me. And it's certainly very contrarian. So let's see what some of these odds are. Simone by decision is plus 175. That's obviously the most logical thing. But Simone by KO is plus 350. I mean, I don't know. I, I, if there was a bigger gap between the decision and the, the, the Simone by TKO, I would go for it. But we're, we're just going to go with, with Simone by decision is plus 175. Okay. And it's going to be for 180. Now, they might let us put these in now, but they might not. Um, we'll have to wait because usually DraftKings Sportsman does not like Zoom very much. All right, moving on, we have Rea Tsuru Tsuruya versus Carlos Hernandez. And we're going to keep trying this uh, this logic here. So you have someone who is essentially going to be going for multiple takedowns, and this is his real path to victory. And he's very likely to get this done. And so much so that everybody is in agreement that that's what you're supposed to do. You play something like Saruya by, by submission, either round one, round two. So these are the things we can't bet. So what we could do is either, again, same type of deal. We could play Saruya either by KO or perhaps by decision. Let's first look at the, at the odds here. By decision is plus 200. By KO is only plus 250. That's not particularly appealing. So we will go with Saruya by decision again. That's two grapplers, people expecting to get subs, that we're going to go by submission, uh, by decision. All right, uh, moving on. Martin Boudet versus Andre Arlovsky. Um, everybody's pretty clear what's going to happen here. You know, Budai is is probably going to win a, a kind of a greasy decision here. For whatever reason, his, his KO upside is not that strong. And arlovsky has got a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of tricks. He's been around forever. Um, so that's what you really can't bet. You can't bet Budai uh, uh, by decision. It's just, and, and so if you want to do anything here, you can either play Arlovsky to win, but I think he's got enough name value. People are going to take shots at that. So what you could do is maybe Budai either by sub or maybe like Budai round one, because I don't think people are expecting Budai round one. And I would actually try Budai by sub if, in fact, there was at least one on his record. Again, just because it's so – it's just very few people are doing it. Um, that is probably good value. Let's take a look. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at his history here, Budai. Any subs here at all? He does. He has a sub over Josh Parisian. He's got a couple of subs here. I don't know if anybody's going to be doing that. Wow, this is a crazy one. As they say, just so crazy, just might work. Budai by submission plus 450. Sounds good to me. Moving on, we have Jillian Robertson versus Michelle Waterson uh, Gomez, the karate hottie. Again, pretty easy um, fight to break down. Like Jillian Robertson has all the grappling upside, and she's most of her wins come by submission. So if she wins, that's what's going to happen. So Robertson by submission, completely off the table as far as betting goes, because it's way too obvious. And Watterson, again, again, the, the her path to victory is going to be stuffing the takedowns and maybe winning a decision. So the only thing you can really bet here, um, honestly, is maybe either Jillian Robertson. Well, there are a couple of things. You could play Jillian Robertson by decision, um, or you could play Watterson inside the distance. But the other thing we could try, um, and again, this is something that she'd have to have shown on her resume before is if you play Robertson by KO, that's like plus 800. So, again, I'd have to see it. I'd have to see it because that's the thing. She doesn't really go for that. She usually just hunts for that submission and not really the ground and pound. So let's let's just take a look. She's got to have a couple on her resume. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Um, what about, how about this? TKO against Pollyanna Vienna right there. The rest are submissions, but I don't know. There's a TK over here. Let's do it. Like this. Oh, we're really gonna go 0 and 12 here. This is these are these are strong. 
these are really strong losses. Robertson bit by KO. We will end up just staking all singles, make it easier on ourselves at the end of this. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, Peyton Talbot versus Giannis Gamamori. I, I don't even know what this this is. I mean, I know this line is too big, um, but I don't know what to do. You know, it's it's, it's he Peyton Talbot looked awesome in his last fight. They're obviously just throwing this guy to the wolves, and he's going to get a KO. So that's what you can. I mean, you can't do it. You can't bat him by KO. You can't bat him in round one. The only thing you can do if, if you don't want to bet Gamori here is play Talbot either by decision or maybe again by sub, you know? And the thing is that I don't know if Talbot's ever, ever subbed anybody, you know? So let's take a look and see what these odds are. First of all, um, Talbot by sub is plus 600 by decision is only plus 200. That is atrocious. Oh my God. So we're going to have to look and we're going to see if, if you can give me Talbot by sub, if you give me one submission on his record, we're going to do it. Let's see. Just to show, there it is. Rear make a choke within the last year. Most everything else is KO. This looks good enough to me, so we're going to do it. Add another loss to the list. Talbot by sub, plus 600. For 180. Okay. Um, Charles Jordan versus Gene Silva. Definitely know what we're doing here. Okay. So this is a striker versus striker battle here. And if anything, Gene Silva is the one with all of the upside. You know, you look at his last at his last fight here. He got the he got the early KO. We'll take a look at it. Um he got the early K over Weston Wilson, who came back to win. So the people are saying maybe that this win is a little has aged better or something like that. And he's had a couple of more KOs, round one, round one, round one. Where on the other hand, you have Charles Jourdain, who doesn't really, you know, he gets a decision, 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 decision. However, he's got one, two, three subs. And a TKO on his list, on his resume. So we're going to try it. We're going to try something with um, with Jourdain inside the distance. Um, it's going to be a question of how to do it. Jourdain by sub plus 800? I mean, let's go. This is like almost two up. This has got like three wins by sub. Why wouldn't we try this? All right. Moving on. We have... Cub Swanson versus Andre Feely. Uh, two kind of older guys. Nobody really wants to play Cub Swanson, but they think the line might be wide. This is probably the fight you're supposed to pass. Um, and nobody was really talking about how either fighter is going to win this fight if they win. So I guess what I usually do in those situations is just kind of just take the underdog just for the purposes of this show. So we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll just play Cub plus the 195 for no reason. It is really a poor fight from a contrarian perspective, though. But because we want to follow the rules, we want to do something every every fight. Okay, uh, Joe Pfeiffer versus Mark andre Barrio. Oh, all right. So I, I might be creating my own narrative here, but... The, the deal is that Pfeiffer has, has a lot of early uh, volatility. In other words, he gets a lot of first-round finishes, second-round stuff also. But as we saw in his last fight against uh, Hermanson, he does tend to slow down. His cardio is not great. And Barrio, he actually does have some really, really good cardio. So I guess the logical thing is to play either Pfeiffer early or Barrio late or by decision. So the only thing you can really do if you want to be even remotely contrarian is maybe play Pfeiffer by decision. Or if you want to get really nasty, play Pfeiffer round three. Or if you really want to be, be a psycho, you'll play Barrio round one. So those are really the only things that are kind of in the offing. Let's take a look at some of those odds here. Pfeiffer by decision plus 215. I think that's pretty reasonable. 
Pfeiffer by sub plus 550. Boy, oh boy. I mean, he's got some subs, doesn't he? Is this what I'm going to be doing all night? Is like hunting subs? It certainly looks that way. Let's see. I think he's more of a striker, though. I don't know. Let's see. Got a submission here after taking down Alvarez Sacrazan a, a whole bunch of times. He lost by submission here. He won by submission back, what is this, 2019, rear naked choke? So it's one of those. Okay. Let's see. Let's. I'll, I'll do another thing. Let's see if Barrio has lost by submission. I want to get something. Mark Andrew Barrio. Lost by decision, lost he lost by submission, but that was by the fluffy Hernandez. That's that's certainly reasonable. And no other losses by some. So we'll just we'll just go ahead and play um Pfeiffer by decision then. Plus 215, that's reasonable. Okay, I'm um, moving on. We have Ian Gary versus Michael Page. Um, I mean, this is fight's been analyzed pretty strongly. You know, like you, it's a, it's a battle of these strikers, and one thing I think people agree mostly on is that it's probably going to a decision. You know, um, you're getting some people on the Page side, some people on the Gary side, but. The only thing that I can think of that could be somewhat contrarian is maybe the fight finishes early. So maybe we want to play one of these guys early or the fight to end early. Like what's like the fight to end in round one, like, for example? I happen to think that Machado's got the you know better finishing upside than Page here for some reason. Let's just take a look. Gary round one KO is plus eight fifty. That seems to be too too greedy though. But Machado round one plus six fifty. I mean, I've I've seen worse than that. How about Machado round two plus eight fifty? The only thing I think I could think of is maybe. Maybe Machado by sub. But again, I don't think he's ever had one. I don't think he'd even rather win that way. Ah, eh, why not? Machado round one. Plus 650. That is just throwing money in the trash. Just the way we like it. All right, Ameria Bueno Silva versus Meichi Chiasong. Very easy fight to break down. You have Chison, who chase on or whatever she's go be going for a bunch of takedowns, and Mary Buena Silva is going to be defending them and, and trying to reverse and get subs. You know, this is this these are their their win conditions is is Chison either you know maybe grinding out a a takedown based decision or Buena Silva maybe getting the sub. Um, the other thing that could happen which I don't think people are playing in here, is that maybe Chesson gets the sun. Because whenever you have like these bunch of scrambles that are going on and both fighters have these, you know, these skill sets, I mean, I think that Chesson by sub is going to be extremely live. And I bet you it's going to be pretty long. Let's take a look. All right. Buena Silva by sub plus 300. That's kind of the moto play. That's what people are expecting to play. Chasson by sub plus 800. Does she have any? That's my question. She's got to have some. She's got to have at least one. How about that? There it is. Sub. Last fight. Any others? A TKO, a couple of TK, a couple of submissions. I I really like this one actually. I mean, people might be playing Buena Silva by sub, but who's playing Chasson by sub? That would be Eric Sheetaber. We are real. Listen, if you guys tell me this 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 card, you are really gonna be sleeping in the streets. 
Uh, just uh, three more, right? Yep. Uh, Anthony Smith versus Roman Delice. Um This is a tough one because Anthony Smith just surprised everybody in his last fight with his first round sub over, uh, was it Salvador? Nisha Salvador, maybe? No, it was, uh, tell us his name. No, it's bothering me that I don't remember. Venetia something. Let's take a look. It is the name was oh Victor Petrino, right? And um, I don't know. He's got tricks, man. You know what I mean? Like, what can I say? He's got tricks. And and Delisi, I mean, he's okay too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just one where again, it's it's not really been flooded with opinions on either side. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to consider this fight probably a pass of some kind. So for lack of anything else to do, like I mentioned, we'll just take Anthony Smith as the underdog. Okay. All right. Just two more. We have, um, where is he? Diego Lopes versus, uh, Brian Ortega, definitely the best fight of the night. I mean, I well, I love the main event too, but this fight's awesome. Two incredible grapplers, and and not that not to mention that Diego Lopes also has some KOs. Um uh so I think that the logical thing to expect is that Ortega, if he wins, he wins by sub. And Lopes has more multiple paths of victory, I guess. Um Let's take a look at some of these odds here. So we can't bet Ortega by some. It's even though it's like pretty long, plus five fifty. I think that's what, this is what people are expecting. I don't know why the TKO is the same as the sub. I mean, Ortega by sub is probably his his path, except except maybe by decision. But these Lopes ones are interesting. So Lopes by KO is too short. But either of these, like Lopes by submission plus five fifty, that's like pretty interesting. But I think that the one that people are ignoring is the is the one that has the spike going to the distance. So we're gonna play Lopes by decision plus the four hundred as the most contrarian of the viable option. Um, so Lopes by decision plus four hundred for one eighty. All right, so let's review by the way the atrocious bets that we've made here. So Simone by decision, it's not the end of the world, um, but you know most people are expecting the sub. Saruya by decision, again, not the end of the world, but most people are expecting the sub. Who died by sub, and that's like literally throwing money in the trash can. So bye-bye. Julian Robertson, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to hunt for the submission, so why she would get the TKO is beyond me. But, hey, it's only got to happen one in every eight times. Uh, Talbot wants to flex his muscles and maybe try to get a submission. Hope so. Plus 600 for me if he does. Jourdain by submission in the, in the striker versus striker battle. I mean, again, just really want to donate, but I actually like this one. Uh, Cub Swanson for no other reason because he's the underdog and I have nothing else in that fight. Joe Pfeiffer, you know, bad cardio, so why would we play him the late, in, in the late rounds? Uh, beats me, but we're doing it by decision plus 215. Uh, striker versus striker matchup should be, well, you know, a very cagey three-round decision. So why we're playing Machado in round one, I don't know, but plus 650. Uh, Chesson. Against against Bueno Maria Buena Silva, who's got all the submission upside. Why are we playing Chathan by submission? Maybe it's a misclick. Click. Maybe it's a misclick, but that's what we're doing. Um, Anthony Smith for no other reason. He's the underdog. We have no other opinion. And Diego Lopes in the most uh, contrarian of the viable options. Him by decision. So we're zero and twelve. I imagine. So now we have to do something in the main event that is um, something in the main event that is. Um, um, that's going to pay 13 to one. So we have to reverse engineer this a little bit. Um, so if we could bet in contrarian, that's even better. So what are, what are people expecting from this fight? All right. So Pahaya, just by, he wins, it's going to be by KO. I mean, he very rarely goes to decision um, in his last, he did win his last decision against Blahovich. So you can't really bet anything with anything at all with Pahaya by KO even if you pick the right rep. Um, so he's out unless you play him by decision. And you can't play him by decision because he's that's not going to be 13 to 1. So we're completely on the Prohaska side. So how are people expecting Prohaska to win? Well, 
Um, the good thing is, is that people are kind of all over the place. You know, they they, they are, they're, 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 they think he could get a KO. If he goes for takedowns, maybe there's a sub. Then the problem is that not many people that this fight think this fight's going decision. So uh, I'd like to play Prohaska by decision here, but the problem is it's not big enough. It's like plus nine, it's like plus 900, right? Um, what is and Pahea by decision is plus 650. So we're just going to have to pick our favorite round for Prohaska to get the KO. Um, so let's just take a look. Prohaska by KO, round one plus 550, plus 800 round two, plus 300 round eight, round three. So can't even get a good KO prop on Prohaska. How about a sub prop? Because he could go for takedowns and maybe get a sub, right? Well, Prohaska by submission is plus 1,000. That's that's probably good enough, but need more. You need 13 to 1. So got to pick our favorite round here. How about Prohaska? Any one of these works. Prohaska by sub round two is plus 35 to 1. Or by round three? Plus 50 to one. I guess we could technically do them both. Yeah. So why don't we do that? We could do all three and probably get enough. No, 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 no. We have to only pick two because then we wouldn't necessarily get our money back. So if we play him by round in round one and in rounds three, I don't think people are playing that combination. Let's do that. We're going to play Prohaska. Round one sub for 90. Okay. Then we're going to play Prohaska round three sub for 50 to one. Well, also for 90. Round three. I got them both, right? Hold on. And round one for 90. Okay, perfect. And uh, that's the way we actually go 0 and 50. Uh, why do we have 14 here? Did I, did I delete one? No, 13, 14. 14 fights. 14 bets because we're betting two on the main on the main event. Um, that should do it. Uh, hope you guys don't lose as much as I do this fight, uh, this this card. And, and uh, hopefully, again, you learn something about how to analyze these things, which is obviously much more important. All right, good luck, everybody.